Well, on the Make to Thrive show today, I've got two incredible gentlemen that have introduced me to probably the most fascinating and incredibly efficient training tool called Katsu. Now, I've been in physical therapy and I've been in training for 25 years and I've yet to come across a tool that is so effective, especially to prevent injury and to maximize your performance, as well as ensuring that actually you do the correct exercises without hurting yourself. It's called Katsu. You're probably wondering what it is in South Africa and Africa. Uh, because you've probably never heard of it. But biohackers and my natural medicine network in America and the UK have been talking about blood flow restriction, but more specifically, CAR2 being blood flow moderation. I've got the CEO, Stephen Munitonis, and John Doolittle with me. Welcome to the show. Thank hey, you. Great, Steve. Honored to be here. Thanks for having us on your show. Well, I've got a confession to make for the both of you. I am truly addicted to Katsu. I've literally used it yes. three, three times a day <laughs> <laughs> for the last six weeks. And I've, uh, I think the psychological benefits and the emotional benefits and the mental benefits I do want to unpack because it's literally blown me away. I've seen my sleep scores improve and I've just seen my, just my mental health endorphin release uh, just improve to such a degree. You know, I'm an athlete. I've run probably 35,000 kilometers in the last 25 years. I do an ultra marathon called Comrades Marathon, which is a 56-mile beast of a race here in South Africa nice. every year. So nice. I, I love my exercise. I love my training. I, I love my resistance training. And I came across Katsu through probably Dr. Joe McCullough and Ben Greenfield in the U.S., and uh, I've been absolutely blown away. So I do want to start with a question, and I don't know who want to, wants to answer this because I've got two gentlemen in the U.S. What is Katsu? So I'll, I'll take a, a stab at it, and Stephen's been doing this for so long. He'll uh, jump in where I mess up. But uh, I, I got introduced to this in uh, U.S. Uh, Special Operations uh, I, I worked in the SEAL teams for 25 years, and uh, I got broken down a couple times and had to be put back together. And the rehab specialist told me about uh, some emerging technology that's being shared with the world out of Japan, and they were talking about katsu. Yeah. And katsu is a Japanese word. The uh, ka is increase, atsu is pressure, ka atsu, increased pressure. You've probably heard of uh, shiatsu. It's a form yeah. of pressure uh, massage, right? Um, so I didn't uh, know much about what katsu uh, was, but when they uh, showed it to me, essentially it's these pneumatic elastic bladders, one of which I'm holding right here. And here's the key. Uh, they're not tourniquets and they're designed to give and move with the body. There's a pneumatic bladder in there and there's a machine that pumps air in for 30 seconds and then lets it go and then pumps a little more air in for 30 seconds and lets it go. And that's uh, katsu in a nutshell is pressure on and pressure off, a little more pressure on and pressure off and when you combine that with uh, rehab in my case when I got introduced to it or with functional movement um, the hormonal response uh, mimics uh, exercise uh, intense exercise in many cases mm. uh, that's it in a nutshell Stephen you want to hit on, hit on it um, something uh, even more uh, uh, simplistic is uh, these bands around your arms and legs allow your body to function more effectively and efficiently. And it does that by uh, a modification of the blood flow, which then leads signals to be sent to the brain, and then the brain reacts appropriately. It acts, uh, reacts naturally. So these bands around our arms uh, or legs is simply a catalyst for enabling our bodies to function the way they're meant to function. Great. Sounds uh, 
You know, it sounds like it's got a lot of science to it with Dr. Satu. Why don't you give us a bit of history, uh, Stephen, with your, you know, Japanese uh, sort of history and meeting him and spending 13 years, I think, with him, understanding Katsu and, and how it works. Yeah. Well, Dr. Sato actually uh, was inspired to put something around his body when he was in a uh, Buddhist temple in Japan. He was actually at a, at a funeral uh, ceremony for one of his uh, relatives. And uh, as you sit seiza, which is the Japanese form of sitting on your, your ankles, um, every Japanese knows this. Any, anybody who's taken any kind of martial arts knows that uh, when you sit on your ankles, your, your calves start to start to bark, they, they, yeah. they, they hurt. Um, and Dr. Sato, when he reached down to massage his calf in order to relieve that, that uh, uh, discomfort, he felt that his calf was totally solid rock hard. And it was at that moment when he was inspired and goes, wait a second, I know that blood is being prevented into my leg. Is that somehow actually creating this this uh, muscle reaction. And so again, he was thinking the opposite of what actually happened, but he was thinking if I prevent blood flow into a limb, can I actually make the muscle of that limb harder, stronger, um, more resilient? And it took him seven years. He used bicycle tires, he used elastic bands, and he literally put it all over his body. And when you meet Dr. Sato, uh, and I, hopefully one day uh, you and Dr. Sato will be able to meet, you understand he's a very thoughtful person. And he literally was a biohacker before it became a term. In the 1960s, he documented, he would put a band around his wrist. He would put a band around his elbow, his upper arm. He put bands around his um, uh, forehead, around his chest, torso, every part of his body, and he documented the results of those effects. Ultimately, after seven years, he came up with the, the fact that, like you have bands around your arms, that was the optimal place to put them. Now, at the time, he wasn't quite sure of the mechanism of, of katsu, but he, he found out that he could develop his own muscles and get in better shape by putting the bands either on his upper arms or upper legs. That took seven years of self-experimentation. Um, he has little booklets that he still has where he documented day by day, measuring and, and, and figuring out what worked. And then after seven years, um, he actually uh, had a ski accident and he broke his ankle. And Dr. Sato comes from a long line of, of physicians and he could have easily gone to his father, his uncle, gone to their uh, clinic in their hospital and put a, a cast on in the 1960s, a plaster, a plaster cast. And he decided, you know, I've developed my body with katsu after seven years. I'm going to not take any painkillers. I'm going to not take, put a, a cast on. Um, he did go to the hospital, get the x-ray. They confirmed his, his foot was very swollen and he put the bands on as he normally did but because there was so much blood engorged in his limb in his leg that he could only withstand that discomfort for about 60 seconds and then he had to take the band off mm. but he looked and he goes well wait a second having blood in the in the injured area is actually a good thing so he put the band back on and he withstand it for a minute, and then he couldn't withstand it, he took it back off. And he kept on doing that. That was the genesis of the protocols that we use to this very day, and developed by himself in his house in 1973. Wow. But then he was this lone wolf out there, um, a self-experimenter, a biohacker <laughs> from the 1960s and 70s, People were not understanding that. So it literally took him the next 22 years of continuous use by older people, athletes, uh, pro athletes, from golfers to sumo wrestlers to baseball players, um, wrestlers, uh, marathon runners, volleyball players, et cetera. And he gradually fine-tuned the, uh, the methodology, which we use to this very day, and he finally got 
the University of Tokyo to start formal uh, academic research on katsu. And that research went from 1995 all the way to 2014. Uh, they did everything. He worked on comatose patients, people with cerebral palsy, multiple sclerosis, people with broken bones, not only in the limb, so not only a broken um, arm or leg, but also ribs, clavicle, um, and other things. And, and they really fine tune and prove that katsu can be safe. And uh, so during this 20 years, um, they worked on 7,000, a little over 7,000 cardiac rehab patients. So pa patients who had done, who had undergone um, heart surgery, um, heart bypass, had a stroke, had a heart attack, um, et cetera. And so they were, Dr. Sato's mindset was, if we can apply katsu to the most vulnerable patients, generally older, with heart problems, then we should be able to apply it to the rest of the world. And it was during that period um, where I was studying uh, with Dr. Sato and I, I literally saw him with my very eyes uh, do what appeared to be miracles. But in reality, once we get into the mechanism and the mm. physiolog physiology of Katsu, it, it makes complete sense. And uh, so then in 2014, he said, Steve, um, I've taught you enough, and now let's go out and, and share katsu with the world. And, and that's what we've been doing since 2014. Great. What a great story of uh, just partnering uh, a mentor who's been a pioneer, an inventor, a medical doctor, and a PhD, Dr. Satu. But tell me personally, Stephen, I'm going to get into John's story just now because I know he's a captain and a Navy SEAL, but how has it personally affected your life? I know you've got four children, I think. And how has it personally affected your life, uh, Stephen? Oh, it, it, it is, um, I, I'm a swimmer. Uh, I used to play water polo, but I, I've, after university, I, I've swum all my life. And one thing about swimmers, very much like runners, you absolutely know your pace, you know your intervals, you know when you're, you're performing well, you know when you're performing poorly, because everything we do is off the clock. We know for a fact whether you're, you've done the Conrad, Conrad's like you, or marathons, triathletes, swimmers, we know exactly within a second if we're improving or not improving. Yeah. And um, after 20 years of katsu, so I'm now 58, I started using it when I was 38. Um, I, have, I am swimming less and I'm performing better at the age of 58 than I was at 38, than I was at 28. Wow. Now, I can't, I can't say that I'm swimming as fast as I was in my early 20s. I can't say that. I, was <laughs> I know I was going to call you much. on that. <laughs> but the fact that I can, I'm getting better as I'm getting older with more responsibilities, family, work, etc. cetera, um, mm -hmm. it has radically changed uh, my life. Um, it has changed the lives of my children and my parents who are in their 80s. Um, and literally we have grown because, um, not because of advertising and marketing It's literally word of mouth, people sharing their own katsu journey with others. And it's been personally very satisfying. And I, every day I love sharing, um, what katsu can do for literally every human on this planet. Wow. Well, it's my goal to get this amazing technique and product out there because I think it's going to save a lot of joints. And I've got a long history of treating joints, mm -hmm. you know, over 20,000 sessions of prolotherapy that I've given. And uh, as you age, your white tissue, your ligaments, your capsules, your tendons, your cartilage, they start just degenerating. And if the more force you put them under, the more they're going to struggle. So when you can actually be specific and, you know, specific to the muscle and get the muscle to work with the lightest weight with the least joint stress you're going to have an incredible product and that's what drew me is that is like a 5kg biceps curl and my muscle is totally engorged and it's twi like almost feeling twice the size and i stop and i realize all the force is going to the muscle it's not going to the joint so we're not getting you know a process called creep and a process of creep is when actually the joint and the capsule starts lengthening 
and you get an unstable joint. And when you get an unstable joint, you start getting joint pathology. So that's what drew me to, to CAR2 is lighter weights with the same sort of results. But John, tell me your story. Uh, I know you're a captain and Nova SEAL uh, previously and uh, CAR2 changed your life too. Yeah, I, uh, I was working at SOCOM headquarters. SOCOM stands for Special Operations Command. Uh, the headquarters is here in Tampa, Florida. I'm talking to you in St. Petersburg, Florida. Um, I was the director of a couple programs, one of which was the HPP, the Human Performance Program for Special Operations Command. And Special Operations Command is the umbrella command over all of the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine, Special Operation Forces. And like I always tell people, when you're in, when you're in that line of work, it's, it's not if you get hurt, it's when you get hurt. Everybody gets hurt, whether it's in operations uh, overseas uh, or if it's just in the training because the training is, it, it's dangerous, it's high impact, it's very hard on the joints. Mm. And what you find is uh, in that human performance program we're dealing with, all of we call them tactical athletes right so all of the tactical athletes uh, that had been in the military for more than five years since 9 11 and all the things associated with that lifestyle um all of them had some kind of joint issue or overuse uh type of injury most people are dealing with chronic pain uh, from a lot of joint issues. I personally hit, had uh, 12. <laughs> I hit the big dozen for orthopedic surgeries. And um, so rehab is a big part of that lifestyle because, you know, you get hurt, you got to rehab, and we want rapid rehabilitation because we want the guys back in the fight as quickly as possible. So just as a quick sidebar, a SEAL platoon is usually 16 people every person in that platoon, every operator has a very unique job. Uh, uh, there's over, always overlap. So you have two of everything in a platoon, you know, two is one, one is none. That's kind of a saying we use. But when one person in that platoon goes down, let's say in a training accident, that whole platoon is affected and potentially not deployable until that person's replaced. Well, after 9-11, we were, you know, hurting for people. Um, so when people got hurt, we were very, very interested in the rapid rehabilitation piece. We wanted to get people back in the, in the swing of things as quickly as possible. So now jump forward to the last job I had in the teams. I was work. it was staff duty. I had the human performance program under me and I had an accident and I tore my supraspinatus rotator cuff muscle on my right shoulder. Exact same injury I had done when I was 60 years younger, exact same repair, uh, uh, anchoring the rotator cuff back in and all that. Um, and the PT guy said, hey, we're, we're, we're looking at these different tools, and one of which is Katsu, and we think it will help with your rehab significantly. Are you willing to give it a try? And I'm like, well, of course. I mean, if it's going to help me get better a little faster, I'm all, I'm all about that because – when I was six years younger, that injury took me about 11 months to be full range of motion, swimming butterfly again, full strength, agility, and everything. Um, so I said, yeah, let's do it. So what they did for my rehab is they took the exact same rehab protocols that I did the first time. You know, uh, a lot of TheraBand, you know, different, different movements, you know, cross lateral, you know, all these mm -hmm. different things. But then they folded Katsu on top of that existing rehab protocol. At four and a half months, I was feeling like crazy good. And they're like, yeah, you're not done. You're not done. At five and a half months, so basically half the yeah. rehab time, I was back swimming masters, swimming butterfly, full range of motion back, 95% uh, of strength and agility back. Wow. in half the time from the same procedure. So that's what really got my attention mm -hmm. uh, with this stuff. That's how I was introduced to it. Um, 
that was four years ago. Uh, a year later, I retired, uh, and I've been with Katsu ever since. So I've been with Katsu for three years. Uh, but we've seen in the rehab world, Katsu has definitely grown in in the U.S. military. We've seen it grown uh, to first responders, uh, and we've seen it grown in a lot of different areas. But um, that was my introduction okay. to it was Correct. was the rehab side of the house. Wow. So from a rehab tool, I think uh, you've sort of said there's a long history. You know, Dr. Satu has got 7,000, over 7,000 cardiac rehab. So it's a safe tool. Can, uh, and I think maybe, I don't know who wants to answer this, but how does it work? What is the difference between, you know, we've got this blood flow restriction. I know that uh, that's something that we don't want to associate with Katsu. It's about blood flow modulation. How exactly does this Katsu work? Well, I, I just happen <laughs> to have it on right now, yeah. as do you, as does Steven. So we're all, I mean, it's kind of cool. We're all working out as, we, mm -hmm. uh, as we're talking. So the big difference between uh, your traditional occlusion cuffs or your, your, your surgical tourniquets or your uh, BFR bands, which basically are often are bands that do not give. Uh, the big difference between those and this device is one, the bands themselves, which we were talking about, uh, elastic, stretchable, pneumatic air bladders. Yeah. Uh, so you're on a bed of air right now as you're doing it. Yeah. But really the key is, is the small device here, which has a compressor in it, um, has a computer algorithm that's designed to go to a certain pressure, hold it for 30 seconds, and let it go. And like we were talking about, that cycle of pressure is really the key difference with, with Katsu. The, the term Katsu is not about sustain pressure. It's a combination of pressure on and the Japanese word is jiatsu. So increase pressure, add pressure, and release pressure, jiatsu. Katsu, jiatsu. Katsu, okay. jiatsu. And when that happens, everything distal of the band right now, uh, so I'm at pressure right now. Everything distal of the band is engorged, or the way I like to think of it is stretched open, all the way down to the capillary level. Everything is dilated and stretched open distal of this band. Now, during the release, everything gets to relax. So even if we are not moving, if we're completely passive, let's say we're a spinal cord, spinal cord injury patient, right? And we can't move. We're exercising from the inside out. We're okay. expanding, relaxing, expanding, relaxing. And as you know, Steve, when you do this with vascular tissue, all those endothelial linings along the vascular tissue will release endothelial nitric oxide, mm. which is key and essential for vascular health and vascular elasticity. Now, you can, so you can do it just passive while I just sit here not doing anything, but now, if you notice, I'm, I talk with my hands a lot. If I start moving while the machine is doing this engorgement, relax, engorgement, relax. Now that is interpreted as a form of exercise. And we know that from the biomarkers and blood markers uh, from the, all the experiments that have been done with Katsu. So right now, just while I'm talking to you, if we did uh, blood marker on me, myself, we'd see uh, increased human growth hormone. We'd see increased insulin growth factor, uh, vascular endothelial growth factor, uh, VEGF, that, that fertilizer for the capillary beds that's so important, especially if you're dealing with a wound or wound care. Um, nitric oxide, uh, brain-derived neurotropic factor, BDNF. Uh, plas plasmalogens, uh, which uh, I'm just now learning about, but we have mm. researchers looking at the katsu cycle and plasmalogens that are released in the body. Uh, so at the molecular level, at the hormonal level, the metabolite, all this metabolic stress, even though we're not lifting heavy weights mm. and straining the skeletal system, we, we are straining the system and the body's reacting in kind. So pretty, pretty amazing uh, stuff. Wow. Right. You want to add anything there, Stephen? Yeah. I mean, simply put, we put um, 
bands, which we can see on, on you and John um, or, and myself, uh, on our upper arms or upper legs. Yeah. Um, and we turn on the machine and we should see a difference in coloration from below the bands to above the bands. And what that means is you literally have more blood engorged yeah. in your arm or leg. Just that yeah. alone is, is a visual reminder that we, that is exercise. Okay. And you know, there's been, you know, centuries of, of, of knowledge and, and over, certainly over the last uh, 50 years about the benefits of, of exercise, both in short term and over the life uh, of a human. But that's essentially it. So we put a band around our upper arms or upper legs. We use this little device to yeah. control the pressure that's appropriate for every individual. Every individual has a different uh, pressure level that's appropriate for them. Okay. Um, higher does not mean better. So a greater pressure does not equal I'm um, better than you. It just means that you have a difference uh, mm. of body fat uh, index. You could be doing different exercises. Um, you could be injured or not injured. So bands put around our upper arms, our legs helps increase the blood circulation in your limbs. And that in is serves as a catalyst for all these things to happen in our brain. And then all of these hormones and metabolites are then released from our brain into our body as we literally sit here talking, <laughs> uh, we could be working. I know John and I, um, you know, when we're typing out emails or whatever, we have our bands on, either our arms or legs. Um, I can get a good workout without sweating, yeah. without, uh, and, and literally doing two things at once. I'm working and I'm working out. Um, or if, you know, you, you are injured, let's say I sprain an ankle, I break a toe, anything, uh, or I just, maybe I swam too far and did too much butterfly and my shoulders hurt. I just want recovery. I can do that in the convenience of my own home. When John and I travel, we, we carry this little tiny thing, yeah. put it in our computer bag and we're doing it in the economy class seat of an airplane. You know, if, if my wife and I are going for a drive, um, and it's any any length. Uh, let's say we go to sub San Francisco or San Diego here in California. She's driving. I'm in the passenger seat with my bands on working out. Wow. If we go for a long drive, we switch. I drive. She sits down and she works out. Mm. And um, so we we're cots really trans has ability to transform your lifestyle when you don't have to put on special clothes go outside or go to a gym to go to a special place and you can exercise as you're doing something else that could be working. It could be washing the dishes. It could be folding clothes. Um, it could be walking your dog, any of these things. Now you start to see how inefficient yeah. your former life was. And now you, you start looking uh, at things your whole life. How do I actually, I can exercise literally as I'm sitting down watching TV. Yep. And that it's... is a huge mind shift. And so somebody like you who uses it three times a day, you get it. You, you understand how this is a total shift, not only physiologically, psychologically, emotionally, because if I know, especially in this COVID um, yep. pandemic, when all the gyms were closed, well, it didn't affect me because I knew I could work out right here in my home office. Yeah. Um, or if I traveled, I know I could work out in the airport at the airport gate. Um, it's really a mind shift. It sounds too good to be true, Stephen. And uh, for, the, <laughs> for my listeners and my audience, what you hear in the background is the little motor of the Katsu cycle going. Uh, I hope it doesn't irritate you too much, but tell me how, you know, you can get all these benefits systemically. I want to talk about the local effects. I mean, if you look at Dr. Satu's arms for a 72 year old, he's got these huge arms and you get hypertrophy of the muscle, you get growth of the muscle, but you know, you've got all these hormonal factors like John has described already. It's researched, it's studied, it's safe. 
There are no issues with car two. But, you know, tell me how engorged blood really. I mean, what's actually happening that, and what type of workout do you get with it? Is it like going for a half an hour run if you do three cycles of car two? It just sounds too good to be true. Well, if you, if you imagine what does the body do in exercise, what does the body do uh, when you're weightlifting or what does the body do when you are going for a run? What happens is the, the working muscle, uh, there's a lot of blood in that working muscle. The vascular tissue expands and contracts. That's why when you go for a run, you get you know, pink or red. Um, that's why when you're lifting weights, you can see your veins you know, yeah. pop out become distended yeah. and right now you literally are your body so visually it doesn't appear that you're working out in the 20th century perspective <laughs> in the 21st century perspective of katsu metabolically at the cellular level as john explains you are working out wow that vascular tissue is expanding and contracting as if you were doing push-ups as if you were lifting weights. Um, and when this happens, all of a sudden, it causes biochemical changes in your body. Your heart rate is not elevated. Mm. And that's very important for people who are older, who are on medication, who may or may not have a history of family heart disease. Um, it's very important if you play rugby or American football or soccer and you have a concussion and they don't want you to elevate your, your heart rate, but you can still maintain um, your strength, your stamina, um, and, and, and not become um, uh, have any experience of muscle atrophy by simply putting on the bands because your body doesn't know you're not moving. Your body only knows that your vascular tissue is being expanded and contracted as if you were exercising. Mm. And when that happens, a signal is sent uh, from your, your muscle uh, tissue, from your vascular tissue, up through your central nervous system to your brain. And then your brain says, oh, you're doing something. It must be exercise. Your brain doesn't know you're not running. Your brain doesn't know you're not lifting weights. The brain only knows that it received this natural signal to the brain saying, We're, we have some stress on the body. And then it releases hormones and metabolites and other things like beta, beta endorphins that it normally does during exercise. So it's a completely natural process that the body um, uh, has and follows Dr. Santos' genius was the bands were simply a catalyst for that entire process yeah. to begin. Sure. Incredible. And uh, no, I still got to use it over time to see what happens to strength and performance. I've noticed a slight change already. I've only been using it for six weeks. I'm probably using it in a way that uh, I do need uh, training in this area. I've used it on cycle during the day. I've noticed my legs give me a better yeah, euphoric effect if I put it on cycle in my legs versus my arms. I don't know if that's a size thing just because my quadriceps and my legs are far bigger. So you're probably getting more engorged blood. You're getting more lactate that's being produced. So you get a, mm -hmm. a greater sense of well-being and, and euphoria, which is you know, incredible. And my sleep scores have been better on days with you know, using them on my legs. Uh, I do want to get into exactly how the cycle works, you know, because I've trained with, you know, doing the, the, the weights and the functional exercises and the, and the push-ups and the burpees and, the, you know, the pull-ups in cycle mode, uh, mm -hmm. which, uh, was, which was, a, it was a, uh, you know, sort of a shift for me. But tell me, as you're doing it and as you're using cycle, uh, just take us through the process, how many cycles it is, how many seconds on, how many seconds off, why is that important? You know, just a little bit of history with that. Well, the, the way we have the device set up is to run for eight series of pressure on and, and pressure off. Um, so 30 seconds and then five seconds off, 30 seconds, five seconds off. Of course, there's a little bit of time in there for the inflation phase. So it depends what size bands uh, you're wearing. Uh, but in, in general, you know, four and a half to five minutes for one cycle. Now, if you uh, are doing a workout and you've allocated an hour to that workout, uh, there's a whole lot of different things you can do. I personally will 
not wear katsu for the whole time. I will do my, my uh, warm up before I even put on gym shorts or something. I'll do emails just with the bands on in cycle mode. I'll do some cycles on the arms, maybe two. So that's like 10 minutes, maybe two cycles on the leg takes a little longer, maybe 12 minutes, but I'm, I'm get I'm, I'm being efficient in use of my time, right? I'm warming up my whole body because there's definitely a systemic effect here. Uh, but I'm also knocking other things out as well. I might be making lunch. I might be doing emails. So that's, that's the warm up. Then I'll go and I'll do the workout, whatever the workout is for today. Uh, it might be a CrossFit type thing. It might be something with my wife. It may or may not involve katsu, but I always use katsu as a finisher. And I use katsu as a finisher in the cycle mode. And, um, a lot of people will, when I first started researching and learning about BFR, to me, it was all about, you, you put these things on, you put them on tight. It's very uncomfortable. You get an immediate lactic acid uh, response. For me, that was too uncomfortable. It's too intense. Um, I work in the cycle mode because I need that periodic blast of fresh oxygenated blood coming in. If you think about what's happening when the bands are on, you're, you're, the blood's always moving. We're just slowing down the return, the venous return. And if you leave them in a sustained pressure, which you can do with this, I mean, I don't want to say you can't, you can, you can put this in training mode and that's a sustained pressure, but you're, you're essentially working the muscle tissue in a hypoxic state. And when we work tissue in a hypoxic state, it gets very uncomfortable very quickly. Can you get benefit from that? Absolutely. No, no problem whatsoever. But the, the, the goal with Katsu is not to bring somebody to failure and then have them stop. It's to bring them up to a threshold of intensity where the brain, the mind, the body is, is secreting all these hormonal, the, the hormonal response to exercise, bring us up close to that threshold of failure, but sustain it, right? So the traditional way of going to the gym, you get on the bench, you do a set of eight, and, you go, ah, and then as soon as you start to fail, you put the bar down and you rest. And that, that HGH release and everything else is peaked and now you're resting. And then you do another set, you peak and you rest. That's not the goal with Katsu. And when you use sustained pressure, you kind of force yourself into having to work in peaks and valleys because it's so intense. With the cycle, with the periodic release, we bring ourselves up to that level of secretion secreting all those hormones, all that metabolite response to exercise, and we're able to sustain it because those releases, and they're only five second releases, but it's enough to get new oxygenated blood in there. So are we doing hypoxic work still? Yes, but not quite at the intensity where you have to stop. Mm -hmm. And the biomarkers of being able to work at a sustained level like that for like 10 minutes is the equivalent of doing a traditional old school workout for like two hours. It's crazy. So it's very, very efficient way to work out. The cycle mode to me is, is, is key. And when you meet Dr. Sato and you see how he uses Katsu, he almost exclusively works in that, that cycle mode. There's always a release aspect uh, to what he's doing. Even before he had the automated machine, which Stephen, a little plug for him, Stephen invented that aspect. But even before Stephen, as an engineer, developed this automated release aspect for Dr. Sato, he would have to physically release and then tighten, mm -hmm. physically release and then tighten a little more. And as you can, you know, you can imagine, that's a ton of work. And the specialists, mm -hmm. you know, after a 30 minute session, the specialist would be sweating more <laughs> than the client. <laughs> uh, uh, but uh, the cycle yeah. is absolutely key. Um, Good. You want to add anything there, Stephen? Yeah, I, I also want to remind people that Katsu can either be your standalone fitness and rehabilitation uh, tool, or it could just be something someone augments what they like yeah. to do. I mean, there's some people who just like to go out for a bike ride. 
There are some people who just like to go out for a, tra a long trail run. You know, taking this device on a long trail run or a, a nice coastal bike ride, yeah. that's not practical. You, you don't need to have it on the whole time. Can you use it before the workout? Yes. Can you use it after the workout as a form of recovery? Yes. So Katsu can either be for some people who who are busy, busy executives, or let's say you're an 85 year old man and you don't get out too often, it can be your exclusive tool. But for many other people, competitive athletes in, in university, Olympic, professional level, or uh, young, young adults, uh, working adults, you know, they have lots of things they'd like to do. Yeah. They like to go swim in Cape Town. You know, they like to go, uh, you know, kayaking, etc. Well, cuts can augment what you do. So it, it's very flexible and, and very versatile in that way. Mm. So I want to, I know John's got to go just now and I want to honor his time and just, uh, but I do want to take you through my routine because the first thing I often wake up is put on the legs. I find that if I wake up and I start getting the circulation going before I train, I'm generally training seven days a week, sometimes six days if I force myself to take a rest day. But even on the rest day, I'm using Katsu Cycle. But what I found is I'll get on the bike, I'll start my training, I'll do that in the morning, I'll do breakfast or whatever, if I'm going to do a smoothie or I'm fasting or whatever, take the kids to school, whatever the story is, come back, get on the cycling bike with Katsu Cycle and take a very gentle you know, ride. I then start to whatever I'm doing, my program. I, I find that if I use the, the cycle, I can push quite hard because there's that release. But there's certain exercises and certain like, so if you're up here and you can see what happens, it, it can get quite, you know, the, the tube might not be strong enough to get the weight up here uh, or, you know, these specific exercises. So what I do is I'll get it to a pressure and I'll do the exercises high intensity and I do it untethered. Uh, I was speaking to you about that earlier, and then put it directly again onto onto the machine and then release the pressure. And the high intensity workout sometimes, and that's where I sort of, you know, I, uh, I dislodged the machine once. Luckily, it was connected to my arms, but I dislodged this machine because I was going high intensity, high intensity. And then I decided, okay, let me do the training module and do that and try and go as hard as I can. And then go straight to the machine, release the pressure, and give myself maybe 30 seconds and then start up again. I don't know what you guys think of that protocol. The, um, I love your Katsu journey. And as, especially for athletes, especially for old, um, um, experienced athletes, you start to learn how you can incorporate Katsu into achieving what you want to achieve. So, so in other words, you can use Katsu cycle or katsu training in different parts of your workout yeah. for different um, uh, periods of time it's not necessarily you stick to one specific protocol that may be appropriate for that 85 year old man who's sitting in front of his television yeah. and, and has a knee injury for a competitive athlete who wants to achieve certain goals you can use the the katsu cycle or the katsu training mode or no katsu at all within your own workout and and as you go along this journey you'll learn what is best for you so for example um uh you seem to be a very leg driven athlete um i'm a i used to swim or i still swim and i'm a butterflyer so i'm a very upper body driven athlete so for me, I get that endorphin rush on the upper body more than I do on the lower body. I know I should do much more on the lower <laughs> body than, than I do, but you know, I'd like being an upper body driven individual. I'd like that thing. Now I look at my wife, lower body focus oriented individual, and she loves you know, walking with katsu or doing different kind of calisthenics with the katsu on her legs versus her arms. And, and quite often we see that with cyclists, runners, triathletes, and most women enjoy the leg bands more than the upper body. And people who are maybe um, gymnasts, uh, swimmers, 
American football players or baseball players who are using their, their upper body, they are, uh, you know, they're upper body driven. And then you have your athletes like your rugby players, your ice hockey players, your basketball players who are overall at, at the elite level, just strong, both upper body and upper body and core, they do it equally. So everybody's slightly different and, and that speaks to the versatility of the unit and how it can be used in your own particular lifestyle. Brilliant. Well, I just want to say thank you, John. I know you've got a rush. I really appreciate your, you've been incredible with your service, just your efficiency, your research, your articles, your magazine, just supporting us here in South Africa and Africa. We want to get caught to really out to this whole continent and really change people's lives because I think it's going to transform many, many people's lives. And, you know, I'll just uh, sort of echo the sentiments of Dr. McCullough. I want to get my parents onto this as soon as possible. I've just got to do the work myself use the product Absolutely. and uh, and get them yeah. onto it as soon as possible. So thank you so much, John. Hey, thank, thanks for having me on. And uh, just a, a, a quick aside, both my parents and actually everyone in, uh, in my family uh, uses Katsu. And I'll leave you with just a one minute story. When I first met Dr. Sato in Tokyo, I actually had my whole family with me. And my daughter, this is uh, three years ago, so my daughter uh, was 10 at the time, and she, 48 hours before we met Dr. Sato, she had broken her arm. So she we show up in Dr. Sato's office from an armpit to wrist wow. cast, and immediately, without skipping a beat, he said, ah, she must do katsu. Mm -hmm. And so he walked my daughter at 10 years old through the protocols of Katsu cycle, single limb, and doing isometric holds under the cast. So of course they wouldn't take the cast off for six weeks, but here's the crazy part. At six weeks when the doctors took this cast off at Tripler Army Hospital in Hawaii, when they took the cast off, they couldn't believe it because not only was there no atrophy, but the arm that was in the cast appeared to have more definition wow. than the arm. Because remember, she was doing isometric holds with this arm three times a day in the cycle. She wasn't really doing anything with her good arm. She came out of the cast and her broken arm. Now, granted, you know, she didn't have, you know, yeah. she was stuck in all that. She didn't have the full range of motion. That takes time. Yeah. But it was crazy. Yeah. No atrophy. Yeah. Which that that was my final you know nail for yeah. uh, uh, being part of Katsu. But thank you uh, so yeah. much uh, for the time. Uh, I need to roll off to this sure. other other one. And uh, Steve, I look forward to uh, listening to this and being in touch uh, going forward. Absolutely. I'll give you one little uh, sort of research to look at is Gabriel, uh, Dr. Gabriel Lyons's muscle centric approach. And uh, she's saying we need to have a muscle-centric approach to longevity, to health, to wellness, that actually your, your, your health and your status and, and how you develop as you get older and how you resist disease and sickness is based on your percentage of muscle. And it's the most important uh, organ in the body. So check, check her out. She's incredible. Gabriel, and, uh, Gabriel yeah, Lyons. Got it. Gabriel okay. Lyons. Take care, John. All right. Thank you very much. Yeah. Great. Stephen, I wonder if I can ask you about the safety because here we've got John's 10-year-old daughter and I've got a four-year-old daughter and I've got a 16-year-old son. Uh, absolute blessings. Uh, is this for everyone? I know there's a little uh, video of a 104-year-old doing cards. You know, who can use this from what age to and, and what conditions? Yeah, like, like anything, you know, we counsel people to speak with their physician. But the conscious cycle, we really, really dial this in in order for it to be safe for everybody. Now, like everything, you know, people can misuse a treadmill. People yeah. can misuse jumping rope. And if you follow the, the protocols of Katsu, meaning that you're not using it more than 15 minutes under constant pressure, and you're being well hydrated, and you're getting good blood circulation, it's fine for everybody. Now, in the United States, what we generally say is that uh, you can begin katsu at the age of 14. Now, 
We only do that in the United States because we have such a crazy litigious society in America. And quite often we have um, also crazy parents who push their eight-year-old child yeah. to be working out three, four, five hours a day because they envision their child will become an Olympic champion over time. And so we, some of our early um, uh, uh, customers where these parents were very driven and they said, well, you know, I, I've used Katsu on my eight year old for two hours. I said, no, they don't need yeah. that because you imagine uh, as we, as we age, we start producing less and less fewer and fewer hormones. Well, children, I mean, they're, they're a yeah. hormone machine. Their bodies are developing, you know, they're fine the way they are. It's, you know, when we start slowing down in life, where we do need this catalyst, where we do need to help our body, you know, maintain its, its ultimate, um, uh, 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 its optimal state. Mm -hmm. And this is what COTS does. So as long as you're doing the COTS cycle, as long as when you look at your hand, your hand is pink, not white or gray, mm -hmm. um, these bands, they purposely engineered to keep the blood in the limb. They're not meant to keep the blood out of the limb. That's why they're specifically desired. If, if you told a, a orthopedic surgeon, well, I'm gonna put these bands on my arms and we're gonna keep blood out of the limb, he and she would go crazy. No, you don't want to do that. You know, the only time you keep blood out of your limb is if you have a horrific accident or you're under the care of a, of a knowledgeable physician. You don't want people to be yeah. doing that. So now the opposite is fine. That's exactly, we're putting blood into the working muscle as we do during exercise. When you're on your, your uh, bike spinning, I mean, your legs are probably red and flush and you know, you're sweating, that's, that's good. And that's what we're replicating with Katsu. So Katsu is for everybody. We have uh, only one person who is over the age of 100 who uses Katsu. We do have one woman who's 99 next year. Hopefully we'll, uh, she will turn 100 and we'll, we'll see her on her 100th birthday doing Katsu. We have many 90-year-olds, many 80-year-olds, many 70-year-olds using Katsu. Again, they're not doing burpees. They're not on their spinning bike, you know, pumping out the watts. They, you know, they're just doing simple, you know, um, stretches or they might go for a simple walk. They're not running up hills. Mm. And now, of course, if you're an athlete and you want to push yourself, and we, do, we have a lot of Olympians using katsu, a lot of medalists using katsu, it's very funny. People come to us and they say, um, well, you know, what Olympians are using katsu? And I say, many, they said, well, like who? And I said, well, those Olympians who actually are using katsu don't want to tell anybody <laughs> they are using katsu <laughs> because they know that that's their edge. Yeah. And, and us, we like to respect the, the person's desire. So quite often when we have Olympians and professional athletes uh, come to us and say, well, who's using katsu? I can only say your competitors are. And I said, I'm going to share with you all the information we have. If you want to go on Instagram and tell people, fine. But if you want, but these athletes are all looking for a competitive edge yeah. versus their competitors. And if Katsu provides them a, a competitive edge, usually they're not going to go out and tell everybody I'm doing yeah. Katsu. It's their training secret. So um, right. now, um, the other thing that we, we, they do in Japan often is pregnant women use katsu. Um, in the United States, we actually, it's the reverse. We actually do a lot of katsu or uh, women who have already given birth, you know, they're, they're tired, they're, you know, they have to wake up with their child all the time and they're, you know, they have a crying baby and, and it's all about the child and the mother um, you know, is, is focused on the child and it's difficult for her, uh, you know, to maintain her training regime and, you know, do all the things she has to do as a new mother. But guess what? She can be breastfeeding the child. <laughs> she can be taking care of the child. 
mm-hmm. as she has the bands on. This, we've seen the women who are, have given birth and do use katsu, their body returns back wow. to better than before and they're just shocked and we but we say your body as after it's given um birth to a child is undergoing massive changes hormonally and katsu just helps um support you know their return back to their you know pre uh, pregnant state so all kinds of uses wow that's pretty safe from pregnancy to the age to the young that's an incredible safe product I do want to talk about Dr. Satu's program. I want to differentiate between strengthening with katsu and building and growing muscle. I don't know if you want to unpack his type of exercise schedule, but I think that is important for my listeners to know that you can seriously build muscle, hypertrophy muscle, as well as just maintain strength. Yeah. I mean, anybody sees Dr. Sato will, will think this man spends hours hours in the gym doing your traditional Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know, Mr. Universe, just heavy, heavy lifting. Dr. Santo does katsu. Um, If he does use, um, if he does do weight training, he doesn't actually use any plates on the machine. He'll just use the bar or if it's an exercise, a machine, he'll literally take the pin out and there'll be no weight on the bar. And what he does is, uh, for him, whether it's a it's a forty year old woman who wants uh, a better body tone, or it's a it's a young man who wants to develop huge biceps. Doctor Santos' method is put the bands on at a at a, a the right pressure, and that de- uh, depends on everybody, or is different for everybody. And then you do the first set. And you do quite a number on the first set. And it could be 30 reps. It could be 60 reps. It could be 80 reps. You go until you start to feel fatigue. Then you rest. But you only rest 20 seconds. In those 20 seconds, lactate is starting to build up in your muscle. At that point, after 20 seconds, you do your second set. And if the bands are on properly the number of repetitions you can do in the second set is a lot fewer. So even if you could do 60 or 80, let's say bicep curls or tricep extensions or even bench press. Again, remember, you're doing this without any weight, just the bar. Um, uh, Or instead of a dumbbell, you're using water bottles in both hands. So very lightweight. But in the second set, you might fall from 60 to 80 reps in the first set to 30 to 40 sets in the second set. And your, your arms are starting to fill this. Uh, we have very tough Navy SEALs. We have very tough British SAS. We have American football players, et cetera, tough guys. And I usually carry with me pink one, uh, one kilogram dumbbells pink one and i say after the second set you will think this pink pink colored one uh, one kilogram uh, dumbbell is the heaviest thing in the world sure enough is by the third set again only 20 seconds rest you've got this tremendous amount of lactate in the working muscle now you're down to 10 to 20 reps your fourth set if you can pump out three or four or five, that's fine. It's over. Your, your muscles are pumped. Your muscles have, have been stressed as if you had actually just did a heavy, heavy traditional weight set. And that's what Dr. Sato does. He remains very well hydrated. He maintains a very strict regimen of you know uh, uh, three to four sets, starting with a high number of reps and then gradually decreasing till the last set you're only doing one or three or five um and then you're moving on to the next set so if you're working on your your forearms then you're working on your bicep and triceps you're typically going from your smaller muscle groups to your larger muscle groups so on your legs you might do some heel raises and then some hamstring um 
uh, curls and then some uh, squats or leg extensions. So um, these are different ways that Dr. Sato has developed over the years with Katsu to use either no weight or very, very light weight mm. um, in order to build muscle. And when he really wants to, to pump up, he'll do two things. One, he'll move the muscle very slowly, both in the eccentric and concentric method. So slow bicep curl up and slow down or a push up. You know, on the count of three or four or five going down and three or four or five going up with the bands on. Um, as he's doing that, he's also contracting his muscles. So very slow movement, contracting the muscles in both directions. Um, and when he gets to the, that point where he can't move anymore, so instead of doing a full bicep extension, he'll do just short little bicep extensions. And for, for women who want to develop their glutes, for men who want to develop their chest or their biceps, these short, what I call micro movements with the katsu as a finisher, which John had alluded to uh, earlier in the conversation, it is a great way to see the muscle growth, also the muscle strength, and also you know, toning if, if you know, you're a model um, if you're a young person who's mm. going out on a date or whatever, you, you're going to the beach in the summertime. Uh, these are all great ways um, that you can use katsu for a very specific uh, purpose. And the beauty of this is traditional weightlifting. You know, you work on your chest one day and your leg, the lower body the next day, and your body needs time to recover because with traditional weightlifting, you're literally tearing that muscle fiber. When the muscle fiber is torn, the brain understands that, it sends out the growth hormones, and then the muscle fiber is repaired. With katsu, because you're not lifting a heavy amount of weight, you're not tearing the muscle fiber. So you're skipping that one very mm. critical point, but it's not a necessary point. So you're building muscle, I'm sorry, you're, you're, you're working out the muscle, you're building up lactate without tearing the muscle fiber. That's sending the signal to the brain and the same or more amount of, of uh, growth hormone is produced by the body, enabling that muscle to grow, to be more resilient, to get stronger. And the reason why is imagine this, if let's say I'm doing a bench press and I don't know, uh, let's say I'm, I'm at 50 kilograms. Well, I'll do a set of 50 and then, and then I'll go, okay, I'm going to do 10 more, but I can't do it at 50 kilograms. So now I'm taking off uh, some plates and now I'm down to 40. Maybe I'm doing a superset. I'm down to 30, 20, et cetera. Well, imagine with katsu, now you're down in this theoretical uh, analogy from 50 kilograms to 40 to 30 to 20. Now you're down to one kilogram you still can pump out another rep. Well, now with katsu, you're down to zero yeah. kilograms. So you can actually pump out several more movements, several yeah. more reps than you anyways uh, could with weights. So you're actually getting much more work in mm -hmm. as opposed to, you know, stopping at, let's say, 10 go. 10 kilograms because you know you've taken out all the plates yeah. with katsu you can literally and i've seen dr sato do this get on a bench press no weights no bar and just pump out the last little little bit and it's an extremely efficient way to really work out the entire muscle to its ultimate fatigue to its ultimate um, maximum and you do this not every other day or every three days with traditional weight training, but you can literally do this twice a day. Okay, great. So that's his protocol, high repetitions to full fatigue, only 20 seconds of recovery. And does he do it on cycle or is this training mode? Um, it depends what he's looking for. Um, so in the beginning of the workout, he'll do it on the cycle mode. And, and he, you know, he, to be honest, he was a power lifter in his, in his youth. 
So he still, at the age of 72, he still likes to every week or two weeks just see, like no, no cod. So he'll, he'll warm up with the, the cycle. He'll just see how, how heavy can I lift, one rep max. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, mm -hmm. He's still an athlete at heart yeah. and he just wants to see how strong that he is. So yeah. every now and then he'll, he'll do a, a base, uh, uh, you know, he'll compare his performance level to, you know, his yeah. lifetime of performance. So it depends what he's doing in a workout, but traditionally he'll do the cuts training early in the workout. And if he's, if, if today's workout, he's actually focusing on his triceps once he gets to his triceps, then he'll untether the bands and just work on the sustained pressure with katsu training. Okay. So the beginning of the workout, let's say he's working on his forearms or, or biceps, he'll be in the, the cycle mode. But when he gets to that point in the workout where he really wants to work on his triceps, then he'll go to the training mode and pump out some tricep dips or tricep extensions. So it, he uses all the tools. The good thing about Katsu, you've got all these tools, cycle mode, training mode. You can do um, like you do. You can do the cycle mode, the training mode, and then the last part is no Katsu. And if you imagine, we, we did early tests um, years ago where we had our subjects, uh, young college uh, men, and they did a, 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 a bout of Katsu. And then we literally took blood samples every minute <laughs> for many hours. And we measured their, uh, you know, we did uh, a biomarker test on every minute or, or the blood samples after every minute. And we saw where the, the growth hormones actually peaked about 12 to 15 minutes after you finished Katsu. So when we found that out, we actually want to work out when our growth hormones are being um, produced the most. So in training, whether it's a, it could be a boxer, it could be an MMA fighter, it could be a soccer player, it could be a rugby player, swimmer, rower, et cetera. What we advise the coaches is do katsu, really work them out hard, then take off the bands, then if there's some very specific thing that you want to work out, focus on in that workout, do the katsu first. And then in that yeah, 10 window. to 15 minute window, really work on if you're a boxer, you know, a certain kind of, mm. uh, you know, boxing uh, punch, or if you're a, uh, a, a uh, rugby player, maybe you're doing wind sprints in that window where your body is at its peak performance. So katsu the whole concept of Katsu is just getting your body ready to be performing at its peak. That does not mean that it's performing at its peak during Katsu. It means that you're performing at its peak after, after. 10 to 15 minutes mm -hmm. after Katsu. And so if you're at the Olympics, if you're a professional athlete, this is why these athletes do Katsu in the ready room or before they go out, they're in the locker room, and before they go out into the stadium, you want to be peaked in the stadium. You don't want to be peaked in yeah. the locker room. Yeah. And so we use these things. So if you're, if you're focused on, let's say, a shoulder press, do katsu you know, during your workout. If you want to just go through a, a nice, great shoulder workout or a spin workout, et cetera, do your katsu, take off the bands, and in that post katsu uh, 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 abundance of hormones, then train there. And that's also another approach to utilization of katsu. Brilliant. I just want to show the YouTube audience. These are where you can untether. It's an incredible system where you can unclip and just fold. So, you know, I just think it's so practical because in this position right here now, you can do so many, you can do every single movement, you know, so it like doesn't inhibit you. I haven't swum with them yet just because I've C19 and that, but, you know, uh, Stephen's a swimmer and many swimmers do. It probably stays on quite nicely. They obviously you use it in training mode when they're swimming, am I correct? Yes, yes. Yeah. correct. So, you know, it's very practical, it's got multi-uses. I do, so what I'm getting is if I you want to, yeah, go for it. Too. For example, let's say you're a golfer. 
let's say you play cricket. You know, these are, these are different sports where it would be difficult to have these tubes hanging around. Yeah. So they do the cot cycle, untether as you did there, and then go through the motion of throwing the ball or swinging the club. And, and this is exactly what we like. Then we ask them to take off the band and do that same golf swing okay. or that same pitch. And the athletes go, whoa, I didn't realize what happens when my blood circulation is maximized and my hormonal response is maximized. Mm. That's when they're truly um, performing at their peak. Yeah. Well, I think I've also noticed that if you use it from a cognitive point of view, if you got a presentation or you're doing lecturing, I lectured the whole weekend, 20 hours, and I, I started with it in the morning. And, you know, I, I noticed a huge change in difference. And then it started we waning off. And then I had to use it again. And then my, you know, it picked up my mental performance again. So there's obviously those systemic benefits that are incredible as well. Not only the local sort of, you know, proprioceptive coordination benefits that come to the muscles and the joints. I mean, my favorite part is you can do it anywhere. You can do it outside. You can do it in, in the sun. You can, you, know, you can untether. You can, you know, it's just so practical in so many ways that uh, I think it suits almost any single sport. So, um, you know, it's an incredible product. Uh, yeah. I do want to I talk. Mean, yeah, go for it. No, uh, you were talking about the systemic effects and, and people think, well, what, what do you mean by that? Um, and, and what we mean by it is, even though you have the bands on your arms and legs, and even though you're making your vascular tissue, the capillaries and veins, very elastic, they're being made elastic, not only in your arms or legs, they're actually being made more elastic in your brain, wow. in your neck, in your torso, et cetera. And this is one of the things you were talking about, your sleep improvements, how you measure quality of your sleep. One of the reasons why is when you do katsu uh, three times a day or you do it toward the evening, what's happening is the capillaries and veins and arteries of your neck and in your brain are made more elastic. When they're more elastic, your experience, you can handle stress a lot better. I imagine you're nervous about a competition, you're nervous about going on a date, you're nervous about a school examination, and you tense up, you literally tense up. Mm. When you tense up, those capillaries and veins become more constrictive. When you're relaxed, when you're laughing with your friends, when yeah. you're enjoying a good workout with your, your uh, friends, you're laughing, you're relaxed, your capillaries and veins are very elastic. Yeah. And this is what katsu is enabling you to do before you go to sleep. So now when you are asleep, that blood flow, not only you know, in your arms or your legs, but actually between your brain and your torso is also very, very efficient. And that is one reason, one primary reason why your sleep quality is improving. Yeah. And also, I mean, for me, a big thing is you're not going to damage joints and white tissues, you know, so you can get an incredible workout. I mean, this morning when I worked out with cycle and training, yo, my heart rate, just doing the exercises, the high intensity exercise, that muscle has got to work so much harder, you know, without the damage to the joints. And, you know, that's, that's incredible because as an athlete, you don't want to get injured. You want to carry on training for the rest of your life. You don't want to have any surgeries or time off from, you know, all aspects, from your cardiovascular health to, you know, your general well-being. So that's what I love about it. Um, just last question as we close it out is tell me about the longevity of the product, especially the Cycle 2.0, the bands. How long will they last for? You know, what can, uh, you know, people expect if they buy or purchase it? Yeah, so um, I've actually had these bands since 2001. Wow. These are 20 year old bands. Now I treat them with, with great care. Yeah. You know, I don't throw them around. Um, so we, you know, we, we pride ourselves that the, uh, the product is very uh, well developed. It's got uh, the, the electronic device. Uh, the products are, the, the components are made in Japan and Korea you know, some of the top electronic manufacturer uh, uh, countries in the world. Uh, if there is any problem, we replace it. That's not an issue. Quite often when people do tell us that the, pro the product doesn't work, 
it's usually because they didn't put in the um, connectors <laughs> correctly okay. or issue. It's usually a, a, a user misunderstanding. Um, we've sold, I think, uh, about 6,000 units uh, of these. Um, uh, we've done an analysis. To date, we've had eight. Wow. Eight malfunction. So that's pretty good. Now those eight, we immediately returned them. We analyzed them. One of the eight, um, the, the gentleman actually was, would um, walk along the seashore. Um, and, he, and when he understood that walking, not on the seashore, but actually in the shallow water, yeah. as he would walk, the, the water would spray yeah. up and, yeah. and hit here. These are not waterproof. Yeah. <laughs> So over time, the seawater actually, mm. when we opened it up, it didn't work. And was, why doesn't it work? We opened up and it was rusted inside. Okay. So um, our next version available next year, um, we're, we're developing specifically for the U.S. military. And it is ruggedized. Um, so, and we understand that because people like John Doolittle and people who follow him in the Navy will be putting in, in working them hard in the sand, in the, mm. in the, uh, you know, uh, high altitude areas on the snow, rain, et cetera. So it needs to be a little bit more ruggedized for, for mm. hardcore people. And, and, and for people like you who, you know, run the, I, I don't, I remember Conrad's, I actually saw it one time. Okay. I mean, it was it incredible event yeah uh, I was in, um, uh, at the time i was in peter maritzburg yeah, yeah that's uh, it that's it's from peter maritzburg to durban correct yeah and i just thought those guys are crazy <laughs> i mean what you guys do so yeah. so you know we want our unit to be uh comrades worthy yeah uh, as, a, as a device um i know how tough you guys are and, and we want our device also to be as tough so um you know if there's any problem hmm. no questions asked um you know we we pride ourselves on customer service and hopefully um everybody's happy and and that's that's how we grow and that's when dr sato told me okay go ahead and introduce katsu to the world um that was a 13-year process i mean yeah. he put me through a typical japanese you know mentorship and it, it was hard and I never knew when he was going to um, say, okay, go. But yeah. when he said, okay, let's introduce it, that's a huge responsibility mm -hmm. that I felt. I still feel to this day. Mm -hmm. And therefore, every unit that, that goes out, you know, really has um, his heart and soul in this. And we want people, as yourself, to experience and enjoy the benefits for their lifetime with mm -hmm. Katsu. So you probably would say the bands, if you just use them and, and take them and holiday with them and use them cycling, you know, three times a day or, you know, on the cycle mode, take you to work, you probably got a 10 year, you know, life, am I right? Or even longer? Yeah. I mean, the, the only reason they would um, uh, deteriorate is let's say you left them in the sun. Okay. Um, and, and the rubber tube, it, this is, mm. this is rubber. So okay. it, like, like if you left a, a, air balloon outside in the sun eventually it would yeah. deteriorate um but you know other than that um i you know in my case i treat these very very well 10 years is probably a, a little bit long but yeah. certainly three years is okay. uh, is something that you could expect um the battery and, you got to recharge the battery or you got to replace it after three yes. years so so recharging the battery, um, let's say this is one of the first prototypes. So this is now um, two years, still working well. Um, again, you know, don't drop it <laughs> like you would on your, your smartphone. You know, don't drop your phone. You drop this too many times and it's not mm -hmm. going to work. And um, keep water away from it. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, treat it like the, the, the treasure it is and it will be, it'll be, Treat you well. Brilliant. Well, I wish you all the best. Uh, my sort of engagement with Katsu Global has been incredible. Uh, the service levels, just uh, the heart to, to get this brand out there has been just phenomenal. 
uh, to John, uh, to, to Richard, to yourself. I wish you all the best. And uh, I'm trusting that this product just uh, grows in Africa. And so thank you for your calling and your mission to get it out, the responsibility that you feel to Dr. Satu and uh, his work. He's just an uh, incredible sort of just trophy of, of, this, of this system. Uh, so thank you so much. And uh, yeah, just uh, look forward to working with you in the future, Stephen. Absolutely. And, and thank you very much for having us on and, and um, being a part of the global Katsu family. Brilliant. Just lastly, as you said, that where, where can people find you? Obviously, we're going to be distributing here in uh, Southern Africa, but where can people find information, YouTube clips and you know, social media? Yeah. So uh, katsu.com. So that's K-A-A-T-S-U.com. It's a Japanese word, you know, quite unusual for us English speakers, but mm -hmm. K-A-A-T-S-U.com. We're right now in the middle of a complete redo of our, our website. It's a, it's a little old, it's a little cluttered. And so uh, you'll see a lot of improvements over the next uh, month and month or two. So, um, and everybody in, in Africa, please, you know, reach out to Steve and, um, and when, you know, we're, we're here in California to support Steve and, and your initiatives uh, in South Africa and throughout the African continent. Brilliant. Thanks so much. And uh, from Steve Stabs here at the Mate to Thrive show, this is Katsu. It's uh, an incredible exercise product. It's, uh, it's blown my mind from all sides, mental, physical, emotional well-being. It's, it's too good to be true. You've actually got to try it. It's, it's, it's that where you've got to feel how pumped your muscles get, how pumped your, your just emotional and mental sort of euphoria you get from it. So uh, any questions and comments, drop them and we'll return, them to, return to you. Thanks a lot.